All right, then. I'm not going to lie, uh, 3.10 related rates is one of the more challenging sections really of the whole year. And if you ask any calculus student, you know, what's the more challenging topic, most of them would say, oh, related rates. So just know, you know, knowing that it's kind of difficult to kind of mentally prepare yourself that, you know, you'll see what you do when you encounter a challenge. Uh, go ahead and rise up to the challenge, all right? So first thing, when you're solving, actually before we do all the steps, I'll just do this basic kind of setup problem. So example one, we have volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. And let's say the problem says, we just want to find an equation that relates the volume the change in volume with respect to time and the change in the radius with respect to time. So really all we're going to do here is we're going to uh, calculate the derivative. So we're just going to go dv dt and then on the right side we're just going to do the same thing. So we have 4 thirds over pi looks like this thing's going to come some trouble. So, okay. so 4 thirds pi and then of course we bring the 3 out in front and then we would reduce this by 1, so r squared. And then since we're finding the derivative with respect to t, it's neither one of these variables. It's not an r, it's not a b, and so we have to use implicit differentiation. So we're going to use uh, d, 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 dt for every one of these. And so the derivative of r with respect to t is dr dt. And so what we found is we found an equation that actually relates the two uh, rates. So we've got it. So that's it for the first one. We'll come back to that because we'll need it for example for the next example. Now I want to go ahead and go to the steps when you do like a real related rates problem. Okay. So these are the steps. You'll have to pause it probably to make sure that you get all these. Um, but step number one, you've got to read the problem carefully. Don't skip over that. Uh, number two, you want to draw a diagram so you can visualize what in the world is going on. Three, you want to express the given info as derivatives. You'll always be given, you know, one rate, and then you'll try to find the other rate. That's why they call it related rates because they have this relationship. You know, usually one's on one side of the equation, one's on the other, and you figure out, you know, you figure out the missing rate. Number four, you try to figure out what equation would be great, you know, that actually relates the two the variables that you're dealing with. So find a good equation, and then you want to, after you have a nice equation, then you're ready to differentiate both sides of your equation with respect to time. So you'll do your implicit differentiation. And then number six, you're going to substitute whatever they gave you, whatever the given information is, you're going to plug all that in at that time and solve for the unknown rate, whatever it is that they say that we're trying to find. Uh, one common mistake is that uh, people plug in all the given information way too early. And so you want to make sure that you differentiate first and then plug in all this, you know, all that information that only applies at certain instances, you know, at certain times. So you got to just wait on that. So it's kind of a common mistake. All right. Here's a, a full example. So we have air that's being pumped into a spherical balloon so that its volume is increasing uh, at a rate of 100 centimeters cubed. 100 cubic centimeters per second, I should say. How fast is the radius of the balloon increasing when the diameter is 50 centimeters? So it's, it's quite a mouthful there, okay? So let's see, step number one, we read carefully. Step number two, we draw a picture. Well, I don't have much of a picture on this. All I'm gonna say is, you know, we know that we're dealing with this, you know, sphere. So that's your picture, pretty nice. All right, step number three, we want to kind of see uh, what we know. So express the given information that we know in terms of derivatives. So we know that the volume, it says the volume is increasing at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. So that actually tells us that dv dt, that's what we would say. That's our rate of change of the volume with respect to time. So that's 100. Uh, cubic centimeters per second. So that's good, good information. Uh, what we need to find out is what, how fast is the radius increasing? So what we need, this is what we know, what we need is we need to figure out the dr dt. 
so we got rid of this. So we'll say question mark. Okay. All uh, right. Now we need a nice equation. So an equation that relates those, you know, the the one we just dealt with is the one we want. So we're going to go ahead and say that we start off with our volume equals four thirds pi r cubed, and then we're ready to go ahead and find the derivative with respect to time. So dvdt, what we just got done doing, and sorry, I got a little status problem here. So same exact thing as before, except uh, I'll probably just you know simplify it a little bit more. So what do we have for we have four thirds? Oops, got some trouble. Let's see. Nice. Cool. All right. So four thirds. Um, I oh again. Alright, so a little simplified, this would be dv dt equals, and you know the threes would cancel out, so we have a little more simplified, we have 4 pi r squared uh, dr dt. Okay, so we, we did, all I did was uh, step number, what am I calling it, step number 4, and then actually step 5, yeah, no I did step 5. So I already found the derivative, I differentiated on both sides with respect to time. So now I'm ready to go ahead and throw in the information that we know. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide so I have a little bit of room. And I'm going to plug in, what do I know? I know that dv dt. So on the left hand side, I'm going to go ahead and plug in, and I'll just rewrite that last step again so I have it handy. So dv dt. Assuming that this done, that's me. So I've got 4 pi r squared dr dt. Alright, same as last step. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and plug in the 100 for the left side and 4 pi. And then you'll notice that I also need to plug in something for the radius. And they told us that at the instant when the volume was you know, increasing 100 cubic centimeters, the diameter was 50. So the diameter was 50 centimeters. So we know what the radius was then. The radius at that moment was half that. So 25 centimeters. So if I get 25 right there, square it. And then the only thing that we don't know is the DRDT. And so that's what we're going to we're going to just let that be the RDT. So the RDT. Oh my. Okay. So now I just do whatever I need to do to get the DRDT by itself. So, you know, I do the math. So I would say that DRDT equals, and I would divide both sides by all that stuff there. So it'd be 100 divided by. Uh, that's how much work I So 4 pi 25 squared, and you can pull your calculator out and do the math there. Um, but that it turns out to be approximately 0.013, and that's centimeters per second. So that's how the radius is changing at that particular moment. Okay. Alright, next example. What, and so this will take you a little bit to write down as well. So we have this ladder, and this is the ladder, and it's resting against the wall. This is another really classic uh, related rates problem. So here's the wall, it's resting up against. And the ladder is sliding away. I don't know who's the mean person that's sliding the ladder away, but someone is sliding the ladder away, and it's sliding away at a rate of one foot per second. And the question for us is how fast is the top of the ladder sliding away? And so try to picture the top of the ladder, you know, also um, sliding down the wall. So 
How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall? Okay, so again, it's kind of a mouthful, but uh, it's not too bad once you once you used to it a little bit. So first of all, you can label your picture. So this looks like a triangle, right? So this is 10 feet, it's a 10 foot ladder. And I'm gonna just label this length as X, okay? And I'm gonna label this length as Y. All right, so this is X, this is Y. Uh, that, those are gonna change, right? So I'm not gonna be so quick as to plug in a six for either one of those. And you know, right now this six is referring to the bottom, but I'm not gonna be too quick to plug that in. So now I've got a good diagram, I've got it labeled, and now I can try to figure out what they gave me. You know, what's the given information? Well, they gave me, let's see, the ladder slides away from the wall at a rate of one foot per second. And so what they gave me was how the X is changing with time, because they say it's the bottom is sliding away, you know, so that length is actually growing. So we would say that we were given dx dt, how the length of the x there is changing, and that's actually uh, one. So it's one foot per second. And it's growing, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that be a positive rate of change, okay? We wanna figure out how the top of the ladder is changing there. So what we really need is we need the dy dt at that moment, and we don't know that. So I'm gonna let that be a question mark. Okay, so we need a really nice equation that represents, you know, the sides of this uh, triangle. So, ever heard of the Pythagorean theorem? So we're going to go ahead and use that. So I think I might use the next slide just so I have room to write everything. Okay. All right. So I've got Pythagorean theorem here. So I've got x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared, right? So that would be, of course, x squared plus y squared equals 10. All right. So now I've got a nice equation that relates everything, and I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to time. So remember that implicit differentiation? So we go 2x. We used to be cool with 2x, but that was when we were finding dy dx. Now we're finding you know, the derivative with respect to time. So even with the x's, we gotta go dx and then times dx dt plus, and then we have 2y and then dy dt. And then remember the derivative of constant you know, is zero, so the right side is zero. And now we're gonna go ahead and plug in what we know. So let's see, we know we know two, well, we can plug in a two. And you know what we're gonna also need? We're gonna need to figure out what x is, so I'll come back to that. They told us that dx dt, so that was that was one, remember? And then two, and then man, we don't know the y either. So we're gonna have to wait on that. And then dy dt equals zero. Now we have to figure out at that particular instant what was the x and the y. So we've got to make another little, you know, another little ladder situation here, another little triangle. And they gave us information. They said that at that moment, this was a length of six. You know, this is ten. So what do you think that the the y value is? I mean, what do you think that the y is if that's six and that's ten? Well, if you don't know, then you can use a Pythagorean theorem and try to figure out the missing sign. Or if you remember your special triples, your special Pythagorean triples, there's a three, four, five triangle that's the same as this. So this has to be eight. It's that same ratio of the sides, so it's eight. So let's see. So the x is six, and the y is eight. So we just uh, plug all that in. So we got eight. Plus, and what do we got there? Oh, I'm totally kidding there. Totally joking. Okay. So I am multiplying. So I'm going to say 12 plus 16 dy dt. Oh, don't do this to me now, you little one. Come on, please do. Please. dy dt equals zero. 
and don't tell me who's got to build a battery because I just put one in. Okay. So isolate the DUI VT. I can up. And so subtract the 12 and then divide. And so I'm going to try to save myself a little space here. And I'm going to say that you do know how to you know, isolate the DUI VT. And you're going to end up getting. Uh, negative three fours, and that is going to be negative three fours feet per second. Okay, so that's how many feet we're losing, and that makes sense because the y is actually getting smaller. That length is getting smaller every second as the as the ladder slides down. So that's our answer. So keep track of the negatives and positives with that because it does make a difference. Okay? All right. Uh, last problem, the rising air balloon. Okay? Another type of problem that we need to be able to do. So we have this hot air balloon, and I'm trying to reduce the words a little bit, but we have this hot air balloon that's rising, you can see, and the height is changing, and we have an angle measure here, so I'm plotting that theta. And then we have this range finder. I guess it's this little you know thing that determines the angle and it determines you know height. Well, it's made with angle. All right, and it's 500 feet away from the base of where this balloon took off. That's the situation. Now, at the moment, the range finder's elevation angle uh, is pi fours, so it has it, it notices an angle of pi fours. The angle is increasing, so that angle measure is also increasing, 0.14 radians per minute. How fast is the balloon rising at that particular moment? So what we need is we need, uh, we've got a good diagram and all that. So what we need is a nice uh, equation to kind of relate the sides and also the angle measure. So who's got a good, who's got a good equation for this? Hopefully you're all saying, I know, tangent. Yes, you're right. So let me go to the next slide. So what I have to do is I would say tangent. So we have tangent theta equals, and that's opposite. So it was opposite, it was h, and that's over 500, opposite over adjacent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just isolate the h so I would have 500 and then tangent theta. And now I've got a really nice equation that relates, you know, the variables and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate with respect to time. So this would be 500. I'll just carry that constant. And then I would say the derivative of tangent is secant, secant squared. So I'm going to say secant squared theta. And then I also have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside would be d theta dt. And then on the right hand side, that would be dh dt. Okay? Now there, the question for us is how fast, you know, what's the rate that the balloon is rising? Well, that's what this is. That's the rate, that's the change in the height. So that's how it's changing, how it's rising, how fast it's rising. Okay. And so now we can plug in some given information. So what did they tell us? They pretty much gave us the two pieces of information we need here. So they told us the angle measure, and they told us how fast the angle was changing, what the rate of change of the angle was. So all we have to do is just plug in these numbers. So we have secant squared, and they told us it was uh, high force. So put that in there. And then they said it, at that moment it was changing 0 0.14, uh, 0 0.14 radians per minute. And then okay, put the DHDT there. And so there we just plug it all into the calculator and get the final answer. You know, or you can do some of this by hand. You know, it doesn't really matter too much. Remember, if you want to do this, it would be uh, it would be one over cosine of pi fours, so you have to figure that out, and then square it. I can help with this down. I, yeah, yeah. Okay, 
So 1 over that and then square it. That's uh, secant squared uh, pi fours. So figure out what that is, multiply it by 0.14, multiply by 500, then VHDT. I'm almost done. So VHDT equals uh, 140 feet per minute. All right, cool. So I think we're good there. By the way, this turned out to be, this here, turned out to be uh, 2. Because this turned out to be square root cosine of pi fours. Uh, you remember that? If you do uh, cosine of pi fours, it lets me do anything. So pi fours, this would be radical 2 over 2. This is radical 2 over 2. So cosine is radical 2 over 2. So, but then when you square it out, uh, you get 2 over 4, which is a half. So that's why this equals 1 over 1 half. And that equals that ends up equaling 2. Just so you know. Okay? Alright, I think I'm good.